Hello everyone and welcome to another video from E6 Vlogs. Now if you're a new subscriber then do let me introduce myself. My name is Craig Roberts and I'm a non-award-winning landscape photographer and I have been for about 25 years or so for my sins. Now everyone's always trying to tell you and teach you how to take good pictures, myself included in these videos, so I thought I would turn this on its head for a change and teach you how to take terrible pictures. The idea being that if you know not what to do then you should be able to take a good picture every time. Well that's the theory anyway. So this is my guide of how to take terrible pictures. Number one, pick a poor location. Whoa 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 no just wait a minute step back there. You can't blame a location for taking a bad photograph. Everywhere is a good location. This is my location today and yes this is beautiful. Just because I'm here in this wonderful location doesn't mean I'm not going to take a bad photograph because I can very easily. See the thing is people often say Craig what's your favourite location to shoot and my rather cliche answer will be wherever I am at that particular time and that could be here, it could be in a local landscape, it could be anywhere. I'm in love with the landscape that I'm shooting at the time and I'll make the most of it and I won't want to be anywhere else. And that's how you should be thinking. Enjoy where you are, enjoy your location, and make the most of it. Number two, shoot at midday. Now I'm out here at first light to capture this landscape because it's the best light. It's a beautiful light, it even makes me look gorgeous. The thing is, this is the best light for landscapes when the sun's nice and low in the sky, which happens first thing in the morning and last thing in the evening. The best way to think about this, if you know you go into your lounge or your front room, whatever you call it, in the evening and you'd switch on the main light, the big light, the light from that light isn't very flattering, it's very harsh, it's ideal for reading your book or doing your knitting, but it's not very pleasing light. So what you probably do is go around and switch all the side lamps on, or if you're a bit of a techie you probably say Alexa switch on side lamps. Sorry if I switched on all your side lamps doing that. And what that does is give your room a much more pleasing look and feel. And you switch that big light off and it's much more inviting and comfortable. Well that's exactly what you're doing with the landscape. The morning sun is your soft side lights, the midday sun is your harsh overlight. You don't want to be shooting in that light. Number three, shoot handheld. Now when you arrive at your location you don't want to just rock up and start shooting handheld. That's the wrong approach for a start. What you need to do is slow down, think about the landscape and the best thing to do that, to help you do that, is get your camera on a tripod. One tripod, camera on the tripod. So what's this actually doing then? Well getting the tripod out is actually taking a bit of effort and now that the camera's on the tripod I'm now more static and ready to set up a shot. I'm not running around firing off different shots here, there and everywhere. I'm slowing down, I'm thinking about the landscape and then I can also use any shutter speed I want. If I want to add some blur to the image I can do that with the low light or by adding filters and that's something I couldn't do handheld. But with the camera on the tripod I've slowed right down. I'm thinking about my compositions more. I'm thinking about the horizontal, the vertical, what I want to include, what I want to exclude, which is more important. And I'm doing all this simply because the camera's on a tripod. It's as if I've now become part of the landscape. And that's my connection. Number four, shoot with a wide angle lens. Now if I want to continue taking terrible pictures, I just bang on a wide angle lens, get everything in, Bob's your uncle. Well that's guaranteed to end up with a terrible picture. Now yes, a wide angle lens is a good choice for shooting a landscape, but you've got to use that to its advantage and include things that need to be included in the shot. Don't try to get everything into the view and therefore an ultra wide angle lens is even more unforgiving. Number five, no foreground. Now if you just turn up here and shoot handheld without putting your camera on a tripod, you may be missing one of the most important elements of any landscape photograph and that's your foreground. Well, in most landscape images you'll have a foreground, you'll have a midground, and you'll have a background. And that helps create a sense of depth in the picture and gives a better viewing experience for the people viewing your picture. So no foreground element often leads to a very dull looking picture, a terrible picture. So find a nice foreground feature and use it to create a sense of depth to the picture. Number six, the 50-50 horizon. So the next thing, if you don't use any foreground, 
is you may end up just doing a shot of the view and put the horizon right across the middle for a 50-50 split of the land and sky. Not a good combination. So this will lead to a very dull looking image with no bias to the land or the sky. So either bias it two thirds sky, one third land, or with most landscapes, two thirds landscape, one third sky. Number seven, a compressed midground. Well, now that you are considering foreground, you've also got to consider your midground. This is your foreground, that is your background. The midground is a bit in between. Now, if you go too low, your foreground will overlap to the background with no midground in between. Again, that doesn't create a sense of depth. So you've got to vary your height to include some midground to again help create that sense of depth. Therefore, a terrible picture won't have any midground. Number eight, no grad filter to control contrast. Now, when you take a reading from the landscape, you want to take a reading from the land, not the sky. Not the sky. You would take a reading from the land and then you balance up the sky with the use of a filter. Now, you don't have to use filters in a digital age. There are arguments that you can do without by doing it digitally, usually by blending two images together, taking a reading from the land, taking that, taking a second picture from the sky and blending the two together. However, you do need to do one or the other. My preferred method is to use filters, probably because I've come from a film background where you had to use filters, there was no other option. Plus, my landscape photography happens here in the landscape. So I want to get everything right as much as I can here in the landscape, in camera, rather than spending time doing it later on. But it's your choice. But if you don't use filters, or if you don't expose your blend, you're just gonna end up with a washed out sky rather than a nice colourful sky or a big dramatic sky if you've got plenty of cloud. Number nine, wrong aperture and poor focusing technique. Let's do my shoelace up. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you've also got to use the right aperture and that's a smaller aperture of say f11 or f16. If you use an f4 or f5.6, you're just not gonna get the depth of field. You're not gonna get everything in focus from front to back. But you've also got to focus in the right place. And if you just focus on infinity, again, you're just gonna end up with a terrible picture. So what you've got to do is focus around a third of the way into the shot. And that's just over, well, it's just over, th hold on, I'll show you. Well, if this was your view, and it's around here, just in front of your foreground, about a third of the way up the frame, a third of the way into the picture. Number 10, no feeling. And finally, if you want to take a terrible picture, your image will have no feeling. So what you've got to try and do with your landscape is capture how it makes you feel. So how does it feel being in this landscape? Does it make you feel elated? Does it make you feel sad? Does it make you feel happy? Or is it very moody? That is what you've got to try and portray in your photographs. If you don't capture how it makes you feel, then how's the viewer meant to feel that when they're viewing it? So don't just snap away and capture this view. Think about how it makes you feel. Try and think of three words that describes how it makes you feel. And then you've got to capture that in your image. So that's my guide to taking terrible pictures. And remember, the camera is just a tool. So don't let the tool be the person behind the camera. That's a great motto, a great motto. <laughs>